Well, hello, people of faith. We've come together yet again on another glorious day. Again, I'm challenged, but I'm excited because God is still yet in control. Amen. We are at a time now where churches all over the world have to become creative in how do we meet? How do we fellowship? How do we expound on the gospel of Jesus Christ one to another? How do we fellowship one to another? Well, here at this ministry, we do it a couple of ways. We have a telephone call-in conference line that several folks are on as I'm talking to you right now. And then through social media, uh, we are blessed to have uh, individuals tapping in to participate with us uh, live. And I'm so honored anytime somebody takes time in their day to just say, here am I. So this morning, Lord God, we come before your throne of grace and mercy. We come, O oh God, because we are your people. We are people of great faith. We are people understanding, O oh God, that you are the author and the finisher of our faith. We come, O oh God, now in the name of Jesus, Father God, seeking your guidance and your will. But first and foremost, O oh God, we open up our hearts. We open up our spirit, man, to receive you, O oh God, on this glorious day. We give you permission right now. Hallelujah. We give you permission right now to come in and to settle the storm and to give us peace that passes all understanding. For, O oh God, on this day. We need to see you right now. We need to feel your presence right now. We need a hand of comfort to surround us right now. Father God, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. We're thanking you in advance for all that you have predestined in our lives. We thank you right now, hallelujah, because, oh God, if it not be for you, Father God, where would we be? Oh God, this day is your day. This is the day that the Lord has made made. And Father God, I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what the day started like. Father God, I give you permission right now to come into my life and come into my morning, come into my mind and take over my spirit and have your way right now. Have your way with this service, oh God. Have your way with your people of faith, oh God. Have your way as it pleases you. It shall please us too. It is in Jesus' name we give thanks, glory, and honor. Hallelujah. Thank you, O God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Woo! Did we make it, people of faith? I mean to tell you, some of us. Some of you listening right now, some of you watching right now, you can honestly say, my God, has it been a trip? Has it been a journey? And it feels like it is not over yet. Oh, my God, we've made it through. Hallelujah. I want to give honor to God this morning. Hallelujah. And those of you who are watching via social media right now, it doesn't matter where you are, anywhere around the globe, uh, wherever you might be watching us. It is my prayer this day that something is said, something is done, something touches you in such a special way that you will be ignited and launched into your destiny, that you will be used by God himself to help set the captives free. Hallelujah. So those of you watching, you may hear other voices talking or communicating. Uh, many of you uh, know, depends on what year you're watching this. This is coming to us the first Sunday in the month of May of the year 2020. And during this time, people all over the world find themselves um, being mindful and being careful and exercising social distancing and uh, proper etiquette to keep our loved ones and our safe and ourself healthy during the COVID-19 pandemic. 
But I'm here to tell you today that it doesn't matter how God reaches us. He will prevail. Amen. So whether you're watching us via social media or whether you're on our telephone devices and you're listening in, I want to make sure that you understand that when Jesus called you, when Jesus made you, he made you for his own purpose. He made you for his own glory, but he made you to make sure that the day would come when you would stand up and say, for Jesus, I'll live and for Jesus, I'll die. Is there anybody out there listening or watching right now? You can just lift up your right hand and say, Lord God, on this day, I come before your throne of grace and mercy. I know I'm not where I should be, oh God, but I sure am not where I used to be. Hallelujah. Well, I want to encourage you this day. And we're going to sing some songs. We're going to sing a hymn and all that many of you know. If you don't know it, I'm going to ask that you just close your eyes and open the door for God to come in and bless you this day. Can anybody say that they honestly need to feel a hand, a touch of the Lord this morning? Wherever you are right now, I want you to understand that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Now, Jesus doesn't say he's not going to let us be tempted. He never says it's going to be easy. But we already have the victory. And so we come together now, touching and agreeing one another in our spirit. Doesn't matter if you're in your living room like I'm sitting now and in my uh, property. Um, and the only one next to me, uh, which she's probably more than 12 feet away or so, uh, is my partner and wife, uh, Sister Kirsten James. And so this is a day, people, that we can get it together all by ourselves. You see, we don't need a big fanfare. We don't need a whole lot of people around us because the truth is when you're going through, when the devil's tempting you and you just don't know how much more you can take. If you're like me, a lot of times when you get to that point, you find yourself all alone. Can somebody just shout, amen? Sometimes okay. you just find yourself, all the fanfare is gone. There is no amen corner. You don't have people with tambourines bouncing and banging and clamoring. Sometimes it's just you and the Lord. And I give God all the glory because I'm not saying COVID-19 was a good thing, people of faith. But I am watching how God is taking his people and getting us back center that we can become more faithful, that we can get off of our high horses, that we can let all of that junk go and just come before him and say, Lord, here I am, the wretch that I have been. Use me now, Lord, that you get the glory. I want to open with the hymnal that just it's real simple. And wherever you are, I don't know on the phone if we have a delay. So I'm going to ask if there is an echo or delay that you just sing this in your spirit. Sing this to yourself. Sing it unto the Lord. But so that we don't echo all over on our uh, live broadcast, I'm going to ask that you, those of you who are just watching, just sing it in your spirit and just sing it to yourself that you can be encouraged and open the door of heaven for yourself to say, Lord, I'm open. Enter in. And this is a real simple hymnal. It just simply says, and we'll repeat it over and over again. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Now, I'm going to prove to the whole world this morning that you don't have to be a great singer, amen, to worship the Lord. Can somebody say hallelujah on that one? We might be the shower choir, but he says, sing a new song unto me. So we're just going to worship him in spirit and truth this morning, wherever you might find yourself this morning, on your living room sofa, in the hospital, in a nursing home on your cousin's couch, incarcerated, in your local jail, in a prison cell, 
finishing up a drunken stupor, struggling in your addiction, fornication, lying, stealing, whatever, whatever our journey is, what a mighty God we serve because he's never given up on us. He'll never leave us nor forsake us, amen? So as we worship him, just sing with along with me if you can. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Come on, people of faith. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Now just worship that again. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Sing it to him. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. One more time, people of faith. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Give God a hand praise this morning wherever you are. Wherever you are in the afternoon. It might be evening time. Hallelujah. When you're watching this broadcast. When you're listening to the sound of my voice. I want to open the airways. You see when we come together. A lot of times we come together and we say, oh, my God, I need to hear a mighty word from heaven. And although that might be true, my challenge to you this day is that God has swelled up something inside of you that I cannot touch. I cannot match. I cannot surpass because what God has given you, he has given it to you. Even yet the challenges that we face, a lot of times we go through things and we just don't understand that Jesus. Jesus has people on the side looking at us, watching how we press through, watching how we press forward, watching how we don't quit, watching how we don't give up, watching how we still encourage ourselves, watching how we come up with an encouraging word for a fellow brother or sister, watching how we see people leaving us, watching how we feel abandoned, watching how we get caught up in our own messes and our own mucky muck, watching how the devil seems to think he can get victory, but watching how God still allows us to press through. Can somebody this morning say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 You see, when we look at ourselves and realize we may not be yet where God designed us to be, oh my God, but we are surely not where we once were. Hallelujah. And I want to speak to you today. I want to encourage you today. But before we get into that, I want to open the airways as I shared with you as we started the broadcast. We have our phone line uh, where folks are able to call in and participate in the service. Service. And I want to just open the airways that there may be a few, maybe one, maybe two that want to just speak out and just give a shout out to the Lord. You might simply want to just say good morning, people of faith. You might want to say hello, somebody. Is there anybody on the line? Oh, my God. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Now that that hallelujah was for me. There's a gentleman that just logged himself on. Hallelujah. And that gentleman has been encouraging me for a long, long time. And I want to just thank God for him. I'm not going to put him on blast just yet. I'll wait till later in the service. But I want to let you all know God has never left us. God has never forsaken us. God has so much goodness ready for us. God is ready to launch somebody today. Hallelujah. God is ready to set the captives free and God is counting on you. Hallelujah. If there be one or two that would like to just give a brief testimony. Amen. I want to open the airways. You see, church is not just about the pastor. 
Church is not just about the choir. Church is not just about all of us that want to act like we're somebody. Church is us individually, collectively. Our vessels are the church. He dwells within you. So whatever God has allowed you to go through, whatever God has allowed you to deal with, it's you and God. And don't get it twisted. Shortcake. You are the absolute best that God has to offer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there one that would like to give a shout out for Jesus this morning? Is there somebody that wants to testify? Hallelujah. The lines are open. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 I'd like to say that I've been working on a job for seven months. And last Friday, the director called and said she's going to offer me the position. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Or so. Hallelujah. And I just want to say, I've been waiting a long time. But God answers prayers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He answers prayers. He's a right on time God. Hallelujah. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Thank you Lord. He's Thank, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Well, thank you, Sister Victoria. We are thanking God right now for your words of encouragement. You see, if we just learn to get out of the way, sometimes we got to take the low end job. Sometimes we've got to clean the toilets. One of the things that a lot of ministers hate when they come into our fold is one of the first assignments I give them, I say, go clean the toilets. Awesome pastor, awesome preacher, hallelujah. Because sometimes we've got to be challenged in ways that we don't want to be challenged. I'm oftentimes, I'm going to give a testimony here. I'm oftentimes challenged by one of my attorneys and, and dear friends in the Lord and in the gospel, Eric King in Columbus, Ohio. And I'm challenged by him because sometimes he'll say, wait a minute, pastor. Now you're talking to all these people about this and that. You're trying to tell people to have faith. You're trying to encourage people to not think the norm. You say a whole lot, but my God, Pastor, when are you going to start walking according to that faith? When are you going to start believing what God has for you? When are you going to start standing up and speaking the thing as though it were and stop counting on yourself being second to last? Hallelujah. Sometimes I have to be honest, hallelujah, I don't even want to answer his calls. When I see Eric King on my caller ID, sometimes I all of a sudden act like I'm super busy. <laughs> but the truth is, as my wife chuckles in the background, the truth is sometimes I just get tired of God using him to set me straight. Mm. Thank you, Lord. The Bible said, as my wife continues to chuckle, I don't know what all that chuckling is about, but she's having a wonderful time laughing at me over there. You see, sometimes we've got to understand God will send in somebody to speak life into you. It doesn't always have to be the pastor. God will do what he wants to do through whom he wants to. The question is, are you listening? Are you paying attention? Are you willing to get off your high horse and just say, Lord, I'm here. Use me. And even if you got to speak to me through that old crazy air king, mm, 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 I'm ready to listen. Thank you, God. I'm ready to listen. Is there another awesome person of faith on the line with us? I know those of you who are watching by via social media, you cannot um, join us and where we can hear you. But anyone out there now that would like to call in on our line and participate, you can do one of two things. You can uh, communicate via this page. You can call our conference line at area code 515-606-5430. And if you get my attention, I will promise to acknowledge you. And the access code on that, thank you to my wife. The access code is 330-834. And then the pound sign. My God, what would I do <laughs> without somebody reminding me of those little things? Amen. Is there another on the line with us? 
Is there another on the line that maybe you're going through something and maybe it was a press for you just to even say, you know what, I'm going to get online. I'm going to participate. I'm going to just listen. I want to challenge you to be bold right now. See, if you'll take one step, God will take many more for you. Is there another? Um, Hallelujah. Wow. My God. Do you see God is doing a new thing? He's looking for that new remnant. That person that normally would go to church and sit in the back row. But the Bible tells us he shall cause the last to be first. And the first shall be last. Sister Angela, we stand with you. We will pray with you this day. And every listener listening, every viewer watching, I'm asking that when we pray for this sister, that you put aside your personal agendas. You put aside whatever your church agenda was. And you be willing to be a live vessel, able to be used by God. Amen. And so here at as we launch our new ministry brand here in the month of May, um, thank God that my dear friend Eric King laid up in nights in the middle of the night dealing with me and encouraging me. We have been keep it real worldwide ministries for years. But you see what God gives me, it is for me. But my job is to help launch all of you into what God has for you. And so in the month of May, we begin launching our brand new covering, our brand new covering for all of those that are out there, knowing that you have a call, knowing that God has called you for such a time as this, but you need a covering. You need a, a place that can open the door for what God has called you to do, not just build up Pastor James but for you to be launched into your destiny. So in the month of May, we launch Kingdom Builder Ministries. And now my dear friend always says that I stole his name, bless the Lord, and maybe I did. And if I did, oh well, he'll have to get over it. But it just, it just fit home because that's who we are, people of faith. Angela, I'm speaking to you right now. You are a Kingdom Builder. Your story is like none other. Your journey is like none other. God has birthed you onto this earth, Angela, for such a time as this. But you see, he did not give you, allow you to go through this journey that you should fall short and that you should fall short of what he wants. The Bible in Psalms 91, 7 tells us that 1,000 may fall on thy left side. Angela, the Bible says 10,000 may fall on thy right. Hallelujah. But Angela, the Bible says none shall come nigh thee. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter how many obstacles the enemy may put before you. If you will just touch and agree right now that you are a kingdom builder. Hallelujah. That you have been set apart for such a time as this. It doesn't matter what you might go through, Angela. It might not. It doesn't matter what the devil is trying to show you. The Bible says speak a thing as though it were. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you right now to stand to your feet and just say, devil, get thee behind me. Devil.
devil, you're a liar. Devil, you have no dominion here. Devil, I'm a victorious victory in the name of Jesus. I am the head and not the tail. I'm victorious. Hallelujah. You thought you had me defeated. You thought you had me bound. You thought you were going to dethrone me. You thought I was going to stay off course. You thought I was going to be depressed. You thought I was going to be dismayed. But oh my God, this morning, I woke up this morning and I sought the face of the Lord. And devil, I want to tell you, get thee behind me, you nasty, nasty scum of the earth. And I send you back to the pit of hell from whence you came. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Angela, I want you to stand to your feet wherever you are right now. I want you to stand to your feet and I want you to declare victory right now. You see, a lot of times we tell God about our problems. But Sister Angela, what I want you to do right now, hallelujah, hallelujah, I want you to tell your devil about your God. Thank you, Lord. I don't care if you're in prison right now. I don't care if you're in a hospital bed and the doctors told you that you only have months to live. I don't care what the devil has said. I don't care if you've been stubborn like Pastor James and think you're going to go into the closet of a building, a small enough area where people say, well, Pastor, where are we going to have service? And I say, well, down there in that little bitty spot right there. Can't you see it? Don't blink. You might miss it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am the head and not the tail. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, oh God. Angela, you are preaching to the choir right now. You are preaching to the choir right now. Everybody watching right now has some journey they're going through. Everybody listening right now has something that they're struggling with. Hallelujah. Some of you listening right now, you're called into the ministry of Christ. You're called to... Have a ministry of your own. I want to open the door to Kingdom Builder Ministries. Come one, come all. That we can work together. Not fight against one another. Hallelujah. What is God birthing up in you, Angela? Hallelujah. I want you to take your tragedy and turn it into your triumph. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. I want you by the end of this call to say, wait a minute, I called in for prayer. But hold on, hold on. Eric King ain't going to have to call and challenge me. I'm going to be better than Pastor James. God has called you for such a time as this. Oh my God, oh my God, I've got to get into this message today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's Sister Valerie on the line with us this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Sister Valerie, yes, it's not just for the pastor to do the work. It's for the people of faith. Hallelujah. I want you to pray. I want you to pray for Angela right now. And before you start, listen here, people of faith that are watching. Get off that stick. You're looking for a pastor. You're looking for the answer. God oftentimes has given the answer right to you. It's time to be taught how to be launched, to be used by Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Valerie Bryant is going to lead us in prayer as she prays for Angela. First time joining the service. Bold enough to stand up and say, I need some help, y'all. My faith has been wavering, y'all. And so many times in our churches, we have a set program. <laughs> it's time for the choir to sing, baby. Pastor, you got to sit down while the choir sing, baby. Hogwash. It's time for Jesus yes. to sing. I want to launch you. We will open in our new building. May 31st, God willing. Hallelujah. And on our 2 o'clock service, it's going to be all of you who are going to be ministering to all of us. So get yourself ready. Get up off that stump. And get ready to set the captives free. Sister Valerie, are you with us? Yes. 
You may have to speak loud enough so that those watching via social media can participate and listen in. But I want you to briefly pray for Angela, pray over her circumstances. But I want you to remind her devil of who her God truly is. Hallelujah. 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 Valerie Bryant. This is Sister Valerie. I'd like to thank everyone for joining in. Yes, Lord. But today is the day that the Lord has made. Thank you, Lord. Let's praise Him because without Him, we won't go through with this. Thank you, Lord. But we need to praise God because He's our body. Yes, Lord. That's our Alpha and Omega. Yes, Lord. So we're going to give all the praise to God. Yes, Lord. Without Him, we, we don't know what's going on. Thank we you. just want to give the praise to God right now. So we just going to pray right now. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All Father, the Son of Heaven, how be thy name. Yes, Lord. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, as we forgive our captives, and lead us not in humiliation, but deliver us from evil. Yes, For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, yes, and forever and ever. And most of all, my father, I ask that you watch over Sister Angie. We yes, didn't try her the right way that she did yes, because she's trying to watch on to you now, my yes, father. Lord. And we just want to give her the praise for doing that because she's written to watch on to you. So let's turn her out and let her be yes, watching on to God because yes. that's what she wants to do and be able to go the way that she needs to go. Yes, so we just want to thank you to get on the right path yes, and Lord. join in God because Bless that's what he wants to for all his children to be on the path yes, with him Lord. because we need it. He's the one that's not going to make you through. So let's give him the praise yes, that he's doing for us. But yes, let's support him because this is his day. And we want to say we love you. And yes, I say this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody give God a hand praise. This. Somebody give God a hand praise. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Well, well, Valerie Bryant, I want to meet your pastor one day because somebody is doing a great job with you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. Now she might say, Well, you're my pastor. <laughs> oh my God. You see, isn't it awesome though when we can stop bragging on our pastors? And the pastors can start bragging on you. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God. My God. Is there another, before we get into this word today, is there another that would like to just say hello or give a testimony or to share from your heart briefly this morning? I want to make sure that we get out of the way and we let God go. Oh, my God. I wish Christopher uh, and Nick were here. Oh, my God. Well, they're my tech crew, but God has been doing an awesome work in those brothers, and I'm so elated. They have no idea. We'll be driving down the street going to a contract work, and I'll just be looking at them, brothers, and I'll be like, my God, since you're no respecter of persons, man, if you can do that with them, oh, my God, man, what could you do with me, oh, God, if I just get out of the way? Oh, my God, I'm just so grateful. Victoria, I'm just, oh, my God, y'all... Y'all, listen, I want to tell y'all, God has already birthed people on this planet that's getting ready to do some things that's going to rock shock the world. I remember back in the day watching Muhammad Ali and he used to say, I'm the greatest of all time. But you know what? Now I can look at many of you and say, my God, you, some of you are the greatest of all times. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you to put it on your calendar to come to Cincinnati, Ohio, May 31st and participate in our brand new facility, our brand new building as we launch 
Kingdom Builder Ministries. And I'm counting it joy right now that God is going to send in ministers. He's going to send in called pastors. He's going to send in financial experts. Now, I have a dear friend who I'm trying to challenge to come and to educate people on how to think about their finances, how to think about their budgeting. He and his wife really could teach it really good. Diana, if you're listening, I'm talking to you. I'm not going to put you on blast just yet. I'll get you in private. But hallelujah, we have people in our midst, praise God, that are equipped to really help launch us into being financially free, into being more confident, into being more bold for the for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Is there another that would like to say something? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just wanted to tell sister that sister Kirsten is very quiet, but when she does speak, the words that come out of her mouth are so powerful. Mm. And one thing she has taught me is that when you can't, when you don't feel like mm. getting up, when you don't have the energy, you just say Jesus. Yes. Jesus. 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 And mm. that gives you strength to keep going. Bless it might actually give you the strength to go all week. To make you to the next second. To the next second. Yes, Lord. And, and yes, Lord. Keep repeating that until you make it to where you need to go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody give God a hand praise right where you are right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my. Oh, my. Woo! My God, my God, my God. <laughs> do you see what God is doing? I mean, do you see what God is doing? The Bible encourages us. And we should say, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And I'm hearing the redeemed of the Lord shout hallelujah this morning. Glory be to God. Woo! The, I, I have a, a request and I want to honor that um, for, for Sister Kirsten uh, James uh, to, to speak uh, with what she has. Amen. Um, as the word of God says, and I'm trying to write about the labors. It says, the harvest is the harvest, but the labors are the labors. My God. Verse 30 is the word of the harvest. He will send the labors to the harvest. Yes, Lord. In this time, we're uncertain that we're in and now. Things are so up in the air, we don't know when it's going to end. There are people that are thirsty, people in need, and we are in isolation as much as we are now. We are looking for human contact, but this is keeping us away from each other. And that's why people are here to drive now in a trend that people are saying, seeing it on television, hearing it on the radio, the call your neighbors, call your family, call your friends, and keep in touch with each other. Um, but I just want to say that we are there people that are thirsty, thirsty. And, we and we need to be out there, whether it's calling someone, encouraging them, to accept Christ. The answer, the answer is, is when people are thirsty, are thirsty there's, there's a need, 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 there's a that has not received Christ as their Lord and Savior. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. 
receive him and say, I believe in you, Jesus, to be my Savior, that you came to this world, that God the Father sent you into this world to save me and everyone that has seen you from our sins. And I receive you as my Savior. I receive you as my Savior. And I thank you for delivering me. I thank you for delivering me. And bringing me into the household of God. Into the house of the family of God. I praise you, Lord God, and I thank you, Lord, for loving me so much that you died for me. That you died and you rose again on the third day with life and death in your hands. Thank you, Lord. I bless you, God. And I thank you, Jesus, thank you, Lord. for saving me. For saving and according to the word of God, word of God in the 10th chapter of Romans, 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 Romans,
Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm, bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm we will not live in fear. Hallelujah. He will Thank protect you. us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He's giving us school, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He's giving us time to get it right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I look at this as an opportune time to take time. The Lord has allowed me to start getting my house in order. Not just my physical house, but I realize that the day I can start focusing on the more on my spiritual house. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. For our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. It is His house. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. So what are you doing with your house? Hallelujah. It's time to get your house in order. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We serve a God of peace and of order. Yeah, what's going on outside, it is bad. But I look at the benefit of what is happening in our own home. Come on, Jesus. The Lord is allowing us time. And I sit back and I think, and I go, thank you, God. I can get this done. I can get that done. Thank you, Lord. in order. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. My God, my God, my God, wow, I don't, I don't know what you woke up thinking this morning, right about now I'm questioning what did I wake up thinking this morning, isn't it awesome when God just shows up and shows out? Hallelujah. I'm so I'm so encouraged. I, I wanna I want us to stay right where we're at. I'm not I'm not moving ahead of God. There might be somebody, you might be in a prison cell right now. Whether you're there rightfully so or whether you're there by hook or crook, it doesn't matter. You are where you are. I want to speak life into you right now. I'm going to ask right now under the sound of my voice that everybody listening, everybody watching, I don't care if you're a pastor with a hundred thousand members around the globe. There's something that all of us can ask God to search in us. There's something in all of us that we can surrender to the Lord. Now, just in case you don't want to say amen, I'm going to say amen for all of us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, my God, we're not even connected. Heavens, I don't even know where all of you are that's watching right now. But can you feel the thick presence? Can you feel the thick presence of the Lord? He travels by way of air. By way of sea, God is here to answer our prayers. My God, my God, I am so honored today. I'm so honored to be connected with all of you online. I don't even know how many people are watching. But wherever you are today, what is God calling you to do? Let us start with just repenting. And I want to open the airways right now. 
to everybody watching, and I want you to just take a moment. Maybe you haven't been faithful in your finances. I'm not talking about the church. Like Sister Kirsten said, it's time to get our houses in order. Maybe you haven't been that faithful spouse. Maybe you've been abusing your children. Maybe you've been taking all of your blessings for granted. And yes, maybe you haven't been faithful in your finances to the Lord. I want to encourage you this day. Let this be the day that you jump and shout hallelujah. That you come before the throne of grace and mercy. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Now, oh my God. You know, this service may not be for anybody out there today but me. I cannot believe that God brought Chris and Nicholas Taylor right to my door just so that I could be close to them just so that like when he says who touched me if I can just touch the hem of his garment by watching some of you let us all go before the throne of grace and mercy now let us all just repent. Hallelujah. 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 Hold, hold on one second. I, Nick. Nick Taylor. Hmm. I, I, I <laughs> See, I don't ever want to be church as usual. I want you to know something. They walk from their house. To me. So the Bible tells us to give honor to whom honor is due. I'm not looking to honor the governor. I'm not looking to honor the mayor, although I give them honor. But right now I'm not looking to honor folks in the White House. I'm looking to honor God. And I know he's a bit shy and I know he may not know what to say. He probably will jump on his twin brother for forcing him to come and being set up to come on camera and say hello. But you see, church is not about me. It's not about what we think it is. Church is where we come together. We be restored. And he just said he cut his own hair. So praise God. Don't laugh. <laughs> I think he did a great job. Hallelujah. Nicholas Taylor, I don't want to be labored long. I, I've got to get into this message, but I want you to come on camera and I want you to just say hello. Now, because we're under social distancing, I'm going to get up from here and I'm going to give him the seat. Just say hello and then I'll be back with you. And then when he comes, I want everybody just to say, hey, Nick, how are you? God bless you, even those of you watching right now, because this is an awesome thing to see Nicholas Taylor walking to church. To God be the glory. Nicholas Taylor, say hello to the people of faith. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've never done this before. It feels so odd. Yeah, yeah, we, we read. Yeah, we were reading the uh, Lost Torah series, and we read uh, fifty-six books, like Acts, mm. Acts mm. in <laughs> one sitting. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! All right. <laughs> like a good three days Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now listen, this is not church as usual, people of faith. This is a launching ministry. You see, I don't want you to come just to hear me, just to see me, just to meet me. I'm honored that you have, that you do. 
But I want to see what God has invested in each of you. And I want to challenge you to be able to be bold enough to step up and say, well, I may not know what to say. But when it's my turn to step up. Just like that awesome Sister Victoria. Oh, y'all just wait and see. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Wait until Michelle Riddle really get a hold of herself <laughs> and settle her little crazy self down and let God take, take flight in her. People of faith, I'm trusting that Angela may have come in today feeling defeated. But walk out today as the victor. Hallelujah. Let us all just come together. And I'll be brief before we get into today's message. Well, to be honest with you, I feel like the, the, the message has already been preached. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. But let's just go before the throne of grace. And I want you all, wherever you sit, you don't have to speak it out loud if you don't want. But I want it in your heart. And those of you who are listening right now by way of social media, cassette or whatever it might be. I want you to believe that God is calling you to such a time as this. That he might use you to help set the captives free. So, Father God, I come before you right now. Lord, I'm, I come before your throne of grace and mercy. Lord, I'm laying it down right now. I'm laying it at your feet. And Lord, it doesn't matter if there are people next to me or people watching or people listening. It doesn't matter right now. Oh God, it's just you and I. I come and I repent now of anything, oh God, that's in me, about me, that, oh God, does not give you maximum glory. You see, I believe, oh God, that you set this time in motion. You called me, oh God, out of my mother's womb for such a time as this. I have not been as faithful as I should. I have not been as dedicated as I should be. I have not done things in the manner that I know I should be doing them. But, oh God, you died. You sent your son to die on Calvary that I might have life and that life more abundantly. And I repent of my ways right now. I don't hide them. I don't shuck and jive. I come right now, whatever it might be, under the sound of this voice right now, individually, collectively, your people come before you now, God, repenting. Giving you full authority to come into our heart and to redirect us according to your will, according to your purpose. I believe that you died on the cross that I might have life and that life more abundantly. I believe that if I begin to forgive myself, I believe that if I confess my faults, I believe if I repent. If I believe that you went on Calvary for me, I may not have the right words to say. I may not always know what to say. Like Nicholas Taylor, I might just have the boldness to finally step up and say, Yea, Lord, here am I. But according to your word, if I follow your principles... Obedience is better than sacrifice. Lord God, take me now. Take me now, Lord. Take me now, Lord, just as I am. Forgive me, O oh Lord, for the times I've doubted you. Forgive me, O oh Lord, for the times that I've fallen short. For Romans 3.23 encourages me, for we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I receive you now in my heart like never before. Encourage me this day. 
that I can stand before the masses and I can now proclaim that Jesus Christ has come into my heart as Lord and Savior. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. And my prayer is that one day we shall have a fellowship service where Jews and, and folks of all different backgrounds and beliefs can come together just on one accord and just cry out, Abba, Father, change us, mold us in your image. You are God Almighty all by yourself. But if we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth, Oh, Lord, we encourage because we know we shall be saved. Everyone now under the sound of my voice, just verbally say, I repent. Right now. If you're watching by way of cassette or social media, just where you are, just say, I repent. You see, when we get so bold that we think we know it all or we think we've got it all, then we're no good to God and nobody else. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Lord, take me this day and mold me to be the person of faith that you've birthed me out of my mother's womb to be. Teach me to love. Teach me to forgive. Teach me to be more faithful. Teach me to make the sacrifices that you are calling of me. Teach me to be bold like Nicholas Taylor. If I've got to walk to get to you, Jesus. If I've got to walk to get to you. No, I'm encouraged, Father. I don't care where you are today. I don't care where you sit today. I don't care what the report looks like. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And everybody under the sound of my voice. If you have prayed this prayer with us today. I want you to know. That when God calls his back home. Thank you, Lord. That we will be in that number. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What is it that um, God is challenging you to do today? What is it that God has done for you that he has not done for me? He's given you something that he hasn't given anybody else. What is your testimony about? My God. My God. Can you just bathe in his presence for just a few more moments? Can we not just be such in a hurry to do our own work? Can we just let God take over and do what he designs to do in us? Oh, my God, I'm speaking to somebody today. Oh, I might not be there with you. I might not know your name. But God's doing a work in you today. God's calling you. He's drawing you. Hallelujah. Kingdom builders. Where are you, kingdom builders? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, God, as we partake of your word today, we ask that you remove me out of the way, oh, God, that your people can receive from you a word that can only come from on high, a word that can be encouraging, oh, God, to not just one, but to the masses, a word, Father God, that can quiet the storm in us, a word, Father God, that can restore us and encourage us and launch us. Have your way, O oh God, and take your word, plant it so far in the pit of our soul that it begins to take root, O oh God. And then, Father God, it begins to manifest itself through our earthly vessels 
that you, O God, get the honor and the glory and all of the praise. Have your way this day, Lord. Have your way. Minister your word to us in a real practical way that you get the glory. It is in Jesus' name that I pray and give thanks. Can the redeemed say amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I tell you, the Lord is doing such an awesome work today. I'm going to attempt, hallelujah, to get through this message. This is actually part two of a series. And I, whoo, I'm blessed today because I have to confess that um, the whole week I've been asking God, well, Lord, if I should give a title to this message, what should it be? And I just had nothing. I came up here today with nothing in terms of a title. But oh my God, just as he would do so, starting with the least of them, he has ministered unto my soul today. Hallelujah. So if I had to give, thank you, Lord. If I had to give a title to today's message, it would be, I am victorious. <laughs> Can somebody just shout, I am victorious. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God. My God. My God. Listen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo. My God. I'm going to come to you briefly today from the book of Luke in the New Testament. And I'm going to do the best that the Lord will allow me to do to impart this into you this day. I'm coming from the 15th chapter and it starts in the 11th verse. And this is where Jesus is talking about a parable of a man and his two sons. And much like many of you listening right now, God has all the riches and God has all of the wonderful things in store for you. But what we oftentimes do is we get in the way. Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. And if you can't say amen, just say ouch, pastor. <laughs> You see, in this parable, starting in verse 11, I'm just going to briefly bring us up to speed. Those of you who missed it last Sunday, you may have to go back and revisit part one to maybe get the totality of part two. But I'm going to try to recap just in case last week's service wasn't broadcast. Because when the enemy wants to dethrone you, he oftentimes distracts you. Can I get a witness? Amen. And sometimes those distractions, they don't always come from outside the camp. Sometimes our distractions come right from within us. Can somebody say, that's me, Lord? That's sometimes we are blessed above measure but yet we stay focused on the things that sound right to our brains the things that feel right inside of us somebody hurts us and we are angry somebody tells us something that doesn't sound like what we want to hear and we are hurt and angry somebody doesn't cook a meal that we desire and we leave their house angry. Our best friend doesn't agree with us. And we break friendship. Sometimes people of faith. Sometimes our worst enemy is right here inside of us. I learned years ago that there was a saying going around. The enemy made me do it. Now, that may have some validity, people of faith. 
But what I want to challenge you is today, what about that inner me? Can somebody say amen? amen? You see, in this parable, he says, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, now look, he's talking to his daddy. The Bible tells us that we should not usurp our authority over our leaders. But you see, this young man has a mindset much like when you look back in the Old Testament and you look at how God was setting out to do a thing. Every time we turned around, the enemy would try to stick up and show up his ugly head. Every time God would do a thing, the enemy would try to do it better. Can anybody say that in the midst of your storm, you can see the enemy try to shake you off of your mark? Oh, I'm talking to somebody this day. See, it's not that you don't know whose family you're a part of. It's not that this young man didn't know he had everything a man could ask for. It's not that you don't know that you're called into such a time as this. But you see, our minds stay distracted by oftentimes that inner me. Oh, I'm talking to somebody today. It's that inner me. It's that thing inside of us that makes us step up to even our parents. It's that thing inside of us that if our boss upsets us, we're not going to do the job. When, it's she, when he or she turns her back, I'm going to halfway do this assignment. Can somebody say, I'm victorious today? Hallelujah. You see, today we want to focus on what is it in us good people? What is it in us called set people of faith? Oh, I'm talking to the right people. When I go into a corner store, it's just as many church folk in there buying that lucky lottery ticket than people that don't know Christ. It's okay if you have to say, ouch, I'm not going to judge you. You see, oftentimes it's people of faith that I crack up whenever we have feedings in these churches. You go to the church line for your plate and boy, they got that right sister who's only going to pinch just a tiny bit of macaroni and cheese for you. She just going to give you a little pinch. Now you thinking in your brain, sister, who gonna, what am I going to do with that? But now you come to the ushers. Sometimes our ushers are some of the meanest people on the planet. I remember coming up in churches and have to use the bathroom. You bet not. Some of you may have been that usher that mean mugged me when I had to go. Shame on you. And everything we do, we should be able to do it in love. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. In other words, give me mine. Let me get mine. Give me mine. I want my stuff. Give me mine. Don't worry about me, shortcake. I'm Gucci. I'm good. Just give me mine. And I'm good. I'm going to go out and I'm going to make something to myself. I don't need you. See, a lot of times the enemy wants to pull you outside of your covering. A lot of times the enemy wants to keep your brain thinking, well, I'm the pastor. How dare Eric King? He ain't no preacher. He ain't preached before. How dare him talk to me? He don't know nothing about this. Hogwash. You see, we've come with our own ideas. Like in this, in this example, the younger son usurps his authority over his father. He says, give me mine. I want everything that's coming to me. First of all, to come to somebody means you believe you're entitled. Oh, my God. People have been hung in this country because of entitled mentality. Talking about God. People have been hung people talking about they love the Lord so much. 
Hogwash. Flesh on display. Oh, I'm talking to the right ones today. Oh, I know. Ouch. I'm trying not to step on both your corns, but give me one of them. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the Bible says, watch this now. You see, I have to sit back and think, and you men out there listening, we got it wrong. Like Pastor James, I remember my eldest son. He would come to me and he would say, Daddy, do you ever think one day I'll be able to have a friend? But no, I was so set, dead set on him being this world famous athlete, the best physical specimen ever to walk the planet Earth. And I drove him, and I drove him, and I drove him. Flesh on display. To this day, I'm still praying and trying to work my way back. Reconciling a relationship that he had nothing to do with. I blew it. I dropped the ball. Flesh on display. Fathers, why not let your children be children? Why is it that we have to have a heart to spank everything out of them? Truth be told, some of you need a spanking right now. We have flesh on display, people of faith. Our flesh, our inner me, has oftentimes been the culprit to lead us where we are right now. Pastor James could only see the basement of a building because that's where his faith was. Ouch, I think that stepped on both my corns there. But God didn't give up on me. He sent me a partner. He sent me a friend that was bold enough to say, Pastor, I don't care what you think of me. I don't care what you say to me. I'm going to speak the truth to you. And I'm so glad he did. So as I encourage you today, my God, I'm going to try to get through this. I probably won't make it again today. But I pray with whatever God gives us today in this message, I pray that it speaks into your soul, falls into your spirit, man, and helps launch you to set the captives free. So get this. The son now fixates his brain that he has the audacity to ask for everything that's his. Now watch this, and you fathers, I need you to get this. When you know who you know, when you know who you are, and when you know what God is able to do for you, you realize the battle is not yours, but it's the Lord's. Hallelujah. Sister Angela, I'm speaking to you right now. When you realize that there's going to be opposition come your way, but oftentimes that opposition is not coming from far away. Oftentimes that opposition is coming from in your camp. And oftentimes that opposition is that inner me. To God be the glory. Somebody tell that devil, stand down, clown. Tell that devil, don't get it twisted, shortcake. Don't get it twisted, shortcake. I am victorious. You better ask somebody about me. Shortcake. So the Bible says in verse 12, after the younger of them said to his father, give me my portion of goods that faileth to me. The Bible says real quick. And he divided unto them his living and not many days. Watch this. Where's the fight in that? Where's the argument in that? 
See, this is going to lead us leaders to understand our place and our position. I got to finish this part. Oh, my God, Lord, strengthen me that I can get through it. You see, watch the mindset of the father. There are about 12 sermons in this one passage. There are probably 100, to be honest. That's why I don't understand when we do our Bible studies and our and our Sunday lessons. Why are we so focused on and on, on going through the whole Bible and telling so many stories in the Bible when there's so much meat just in each verse? Slow it down, Pastor. Slow it down that I can get this. So I want to take the word of God and I want to keep it practical for each of you. That it becomes, Angela, applicable. And then for some of you, Victoria, it becomes deliverable. Amen. So as we take the word of God in its practical form, we receive it into us eternally, that we can internalize it, that we can then make it applicable and then if God has called you to preach the gospel of Christ, you can then make it deliverable. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and so the father, get his mindset, people of faith. There's no fighting. And verse 13 says, and not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey. Now look at this. God even gave the boy time in this parable. He gave the boy time to sit back and think about it. You ever been so mad at somebody? Time passes and you can't even remember what you're mad about, but you're just going to be stuck on being mad. I've been so mad with my mother-in-law, Emily Stewart. It just, I, but look, I thought I had a rightful reason to be mad at her. And when she goes on and shows me up by just being faithful, make me feel about that big. Maybe that's too high. Maybe that right there. Guys, we're cheating ourselves out of what God has for us. What's inside of you? What's going on with you to where you can't see the forest for the trees? He didn't even leave right away. He took some time. And instead of coming to our senses soon, we get so bent up inside and so puffed up inside that even when God comes with an answer, we're so angry and so mad at the world that we are going to be stuck on stupid. Somebody needs to say ouch on that one. Ouch. So he says, and not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into the far country and there wasted his substance with <laughs> righteous living. Oh, my God. Do you see, the son meant well. See, the son thought he was getting ready to go live, large, live life larger than life. See, the son probably was thinking that he's got this under control. Some of you that are. 17, 18, and 19, you can't wait to get your first paycheck because you and your friends want to move out and be your own adult. You can't wait to spread your wings and fly like an eagle. <laughs> Why not wait until you are ready? <laughs> Why not just slow it down? When they were in the boat and the wind was tossing it, a mighty wind was tossing them to and fro. Jesus found himself in the lowest part of the compartment of the boat. And when Jesus rose, he didn't rise with a whole lot of prolific words. He said, peace, be still. In other words, we got this. In other words, you're already victorious. Just stay in your lane. Stay connected, get connected, and let God use your right from where you are. You've got everything you need. Oh, sure, you're going to have family members and friends come to you and tell you, oh, you know, you're part of the wrong church or you're part of the wrong ministry. 
You're going to have people come to you and say, well, why don't you go to a bigger church? You know, that church don't even have a choir. Now, I think that was Chris in the background. He said, we got a shower choir. It's all good. We do some of our best singing in the shower. Amen. I'm not ashamed of it. God didn't say I'm cutting albums. Not yet. Watch out. <laughs> but what God is doing is he's calling me to stop getting distracted. You see, in this story here, the younger son got distracted. You see, how can you have all the riches and glory and everything that you can want and still not be satisfied? See, there's something on the inside. See, that's that inner me. You see, God has called you to preach the gospel. But could you wait until it was your time to be launched? Or do you just have to just jump out there? Can you just sit down and wait? He's not going to hurt you. He's not going to abandon you. He's not going to take out of you what he put in you. My God. So he says, and when he had spent all. Now, isn't this like most of us? <laughs> we don't come back till we broke. Amen. <laughs> Anybody have friends like that? <laughs> when your friends have money, you never see them. Soon as they be broke. Hey, Pastor, I'm thinking about coming to church Sunday. And I've had to learn from this text. My job ain't to judge folks. Church folk watching, stop judging. Get your mouth off of people. Read the Bible for a change. God used some of the nastiest people in the world. Now, I hope I don't get in trouble from the White House for saying what I'm about to say. And I don't mean this to be political. But I've been very harsh on our current president. I've said that that joke has got to be one of the nastiest human beings on the planet. But I repent. Because no matter what I think about him, guess what? He is the president. And I'm not. I'm trying to just gain enough faith to come from the basement upstairs. And I thank God for whoever God chooses to use for whatever reason. I don't mean I'm going to be hobnobbing and throwing parties tomorrow. But what I'm trying to learn, and as my good friend Eric King has taught me, I got to learn to get out of the way, y'all. Now, of course, I'm still waiting on my stimulus. I don't think I'm the last person on earth to get one. I don't know why. Maybe that's another faith thing. But I'm going to wait on the Lord to renew my strength. And when God is ready to send me, I'm ready to go. Amen. So he says. There arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. My God, you had everything. Now look at what the inner me has led you to. You may not be with the swine yet. But if we don't stop and turn from our own fleshly ways, God has blessed you, but he's blessed you to be a blessing. When are you going to start doing so? God has challenged you so that you can stand up and help set the captives free. When are you going to do so? My God. I'm going to skip down to... Verse 16, and he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat. My God, <laughs> you talking about from the palace to the ruins and no man gave unto him. <laughs> and when he came to himself, my God, you see, he had time to get to himself. But sometimes, Angela, God has he allows bad things to go on to get our attention. 
Sometimes he allows things not to be as smooth. Not that he couldn't turn it around, mind you. But sometimes he allows things to be how they are. That he can get us back to center. That he can drive our passion to want to join a church line. A, uh, become a faithful uh, 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 congregant. To be a part of a move of Christ. That we collectively can go to the highways and byways and, byways and compel the lost to come. Amen. You see, but a lot of times, people of faith, God has used things, even that inner me, to drive our passions back. You see, He wants us to recognize who He is in our life. He wants us to feel that it's better to be content, hallelujah, than to necessarily be happy. Wow. Wow. Woo, I hope that nugget fell in somebody today. And when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare? You see, when you wake up now, when that spirit man in you wakes up and realizes, hold on. I am the absolute best that God has to offer. I am the head and not the tail. God has trusted something in me. God has given me a testimony that can help go set the captives free. Amen. When you finally come to yourself. But I want to get to a certain part. I, I already have to say, Lord, forgive me. I'm not going to finish this today. But I've got to get to the mindset of the Father. That's why it's so important that you're connected with leadership. Connected where people love you. Where leadership has your best interest at heart. And don't get it twisted. It's not going to always look the way you want it to look. You might always feel challenged. You might always feel like they're against you and not for you. But what does not break you will only make you stronger. Who are you connected to today? Who can upset you today and you'll still keep coming back? My God. My God. My God. Where are you in your walk today, people of faith? What do you think when you wake up in the morning? Who are you in Christ? Look back over your life and see what God has brought you from. See where he's delivered you from. Have you been an alcoholic? So what? Have you been on drugs? So what? Have you been a prostitute? So what? If you've been like Pastor James and it takes a, a old stubborn, arrogant, fussy, feisty attorney in Columbus, Ohio to challenge your lack of faith? So what? If you have not been faithful in your giving, so what? You can turn it around right now. You can change your mind. You can come to yourself. When was the last time you went to church, somebody? Well, I'm not going to go to that church because that pastor, he and I don't get along. That pastor, he don't see things how I see them. So what? It ain't about the pastor. It's about you and God. Get yourself connected. We've been operating under Keep It Real Worldwide Ministries. For a long time. And I believe doing a fabulous job. Kind of, sort of. But oh baby. Oh baby. You ain't seen nothing yet. Kingdom Builder Ministries. Is going to teach. Educate. And launch. Awesome people of faith. To set the captives free. If you don't have a church home, if you don't have covering in your ministry, I challenge you 
I encourage you right now under the sound of my voice. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Call me. Send me a message and say, Pastor, I'm on board. Pastor, I have a ministry. I just need a covering. Then we will partner with you to cover you. I think that noise out there might be Jesus saying amen. <laughs> Some of you are walking out an isolated ministry. You don't have to. And yes, I understand how difficult it is to have pastors co-pastor together. Ministers to co-minister together. I understand. Been there, done that. But what I promise you, what I promise you is that I'm going to be a man of more faith, greater faith than I've ever been before. And I will meet with you and sit with you. And Kingdom Builder Ministries will do whatever it takes to help launch what God has invested into you. And as we partner together, to go and set the masses and set the captives free. We will do it together. And that's why we need faith partners. So in this text, as you're seeing yourself, and I'm not going to make it through the end of this. Prayerfully part three, I can bring some closure. Oh, isn't that amazing? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Isn't that amazing? So there will be a part three. But I want you to see here, when he came to himself, he started rehearsing like, okay, I'm going to say this. You ever gone on a date before and you got to get in the mirror, get your favorite hairdo, your favorite haircut, and you say like, hey, how you doing? Or, oh, I'm not going to act too easy and too quick. I'm just going to, oh, I'm going to keep myself together. But on the inside, you're like, oh, he's so bad. Oh. <laughs> but when you show up, you want to act like you got yourself together. I'm Gucci. I'm cool. <laughs> you just another dude to me. And inside you're shaking and trembling like, oh, my God. He remembered my name. Oh, my God. 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 To where somebody got to slap you and wake you up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So much like in this. He's rehearsing and he says, I will arise and go to my father and I'll say unto him, watch, he's practicing. He's, he's, he's going through the ritual. I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to practice because I want to make it right because I know what I did was wrong. I know I stepped out too soon. I have an 18 year old son, Lemuel, and I know his friends gather around him sometimes and say, Lemuel, we can move out. We can get, we all got jobs. We can move out. But I want to teach my son move out. But move out when you're ready. Not just because you want to do something. So, right now, many of you, under the sound of my voice, God is calling you, but move out when you're ready, when he's ready for you. Now watch this. He says, I will say unto him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and before thee. Verse 19, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thine servants. And he arose and came to his father. Now get this. I'm going to close with this because I cannot finish the rest of this. Watch the father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. He went through his ritual. See, God is not here to call you out on your mess. He already knows your mess. God has the heart of a father. And watch the father. The word in verse 22 starts off with but. 
B-U-T. In other words, after all you think that needs to go down, Angela, after all you think that's going to happen, Angela, after all you think that's going to take place, Angela, the Bible says, but, in other words, all that you went through might be what you went through. However, it's not the end story. It's not the end result. It's not your end. Hallelujah. He says, but the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him. Now watch this. Watch what he's doing. He's forsaking all ritual of processes. He's saying, my prodigal son has come home. He's come to his senses to say, this is where I belong. And it's my place to restore him. I don't care if you were an alcoholic. I don't care if you've gone to prison 15 times. It's time to come home. You are victorious. Hallelujah. Thank you, O oh God. Walk in your victory. Your father has just been waiting for you for such a time as this. Is Nick and Christopher Taylor the only ones out here walking to get it? I don't think so. By any means necessary. Lord, I want what you have for me. But fathers, I want you to get this. He didn't ridicule the son when he came home. He didn't beat the son over the head with the obvious. And much like the son was rehearsing, I can imagine daddy was too. You see, our God has been waiting on us to just wake up. He's just been waiting on you to realize you are the absolute best that God has to offer. Don't get it twisted, shortcake. Hallelujah. I'm closing. I'm closing today. He says to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fattest cow and kill it and let us eat and be merry. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh my God, I read this story, I don't know how many times. I've preached this, I don't know how many times. But as soon as I looked at verse 24, it broke me. The father says, for this is my son who was dead and is alive again. Oh my God. How many of us called people are walking around having lack of faith for what God has called us to do? How many of us keep telling God about our problems? When we don't tell our problems about our God, Oh my God. People of faith, God is here with us now. The presence of the Lord is so thick. I want to challenge you. I want to encourage you this day. It doesn't matter how you started this day. It doesn't matter what I thought when I woke up. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And I believe that I'm victorious this day. I believe God is trying to do something, even in the midst of this COVID-19. What is God trying to do to you today? What is he trying to say to you today? Come in out of the wilderness. Stop disbelieving what God can do. 
He can do above and beyond whatever we can imagine or think. I encourage you to believe today. I'm ending this today with this because I don't want to just sit on the screen and cry all day. I want to encourage somebody that's listening now. If you believe that the Lord has spoke volumes into your life today, I want to encourage you this day to partner with this ministry as we move forward. To let us partner with you to become faithful in all thy ways. As we move forward, moving to May 31st, we're scheduled to move into our new church building. I'm believing God. I'm believing and trusting in God. And I'm believing that he's going to encourage some of you now to join with us as faith partners to go onto your cash apps. And I believe it's still new to me, but I believe uh, some of the folks in the church set up a cash app, which is, I believe it starts off with the dollar sign, the capital L launch, capital T, the capital K kingdom. Launch the kingdom. And I'm asking for your support that this ministry can reach the masses and help set the captives free, that we will bring in enough finances to support those ministries that come in under this covering. And I want to speak to those that have followed us in the past. I'm so grateful for you. I thank God for you. I really and truly appreciate your love, your kindness, and your support. But as we move forward, My job is to help you see and become who you are in Christ. And I'm committed now more than ever to do that. So when we do our hospitality, don't think I'm going to bring all the bagels just so you can eat them up. I'm going to expect that you bring some bagels and still don't eat them all up. So I'm asking everyone now that feel that uh, this could be a home for you. I welcome you with open arms to come and to join with us and to partner with us that we can build the kingdom of heaven together. And I promise you, thank you, Lord. Did somebody say something? Yes, I want to tell you that I'm in agreement and I have texted you so. Hallelujah. Well, hold on, hold on. Who will tell the people of faith who you are? I, I've got to. Tr- you all know I need Chris and Nick to help me with my technical stuff, so I have to go slow. So hold on a second now. Oh my God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Lord has been saying for years, I'm sending them. Don't worry. I'm sending them. I'm sending them. You just be ready. Thank you, Lord. Now, I I know you all can't see my text messages. But all I can say is this service may not have been for anybody today but me. And it's okay. (laughs) I'm okay with that. (laughs) Well, maybe Nick Taylor because he got a chance to speak to the people of faith for the first time in his life. And maybe Angela because she came in one way needing something. And my prayer is now today she's walking out receiving something. Amen. And Victoria, my God. All I can say is y'all better be ready for May 31st. We've got some awesome people of faith 
stepping up and getting ready to set the captives free. All of you who want to reach out to me, you can call me personally at area code 513-487-8843. If you are incarcerated, I'll make sure that the church puts some money on my jail account so that I can receive your collect call. And I believe the people of faith will partner with me to be a beacon of light and hope for you where you are, that when God sees fit to release you and to send you home, you will have a platform to launch your ministry. I'm asking you to call me at area code 513-487-8843 or send me an email, my personal email, my direct email, now, this may end up changing. Another challenge by my attorney. Thank you, Lord. But as of right now, it is Pastor Sonny James at gmail.com. On my new email, you'll probably see Pastor Robert Sonny James at gmail.com or something toward the ministry. We have until May 31st to figure all that out. Thank God. So. Right now, if you need to email me, you can do so at Pastor Sonny James at gmail.com. That's P A S T O R S O N N Y J A M E S. I'm all choked up, people of faith. This service today has uplifted me and encouraged me like you wouldn't Thank believe. Thank you, Father. Call me, email me. We will do our very best to meet the needs of the people. And when I say that, I don't mean call me because you want some bagels with cream cheese. I want you to call us because you've decided that this is where God has called you to be a partner, to be launched in what God has for you, that we partner together to help set the captives free and be faithful in all thy ways. I don't care if it's one dollar. I don't care if it's a million dollars. I don't care. Because I have more faith now than I ever did before. Yes, it's a tall order ahead of us. But I believe God has launched this ministry for people like you. So God bless each and every one of you. We're going to have our benediction. But before I do, I want to thank God for each and every one of you that have taken time out in this day to participate in this service. I also, if Angela is still on the line with us, I don't know if she is or not, I wanna give her an opportunity or anybody else, I wanna give you an opportunity to just speak and just share what the Lord may have blessed you with today in today's message. Angela, are you still with us now or did you have to leave? I heard a few clicks off, so I'm not sure. Some of you had pre-arranged schedules, and I understand that. But wherever she may be right now, I'm trusting and believing she's not the same as she was when she came in. Thank you, Sister Valerie Bryan, for a wonderful, wonderful prayer. Thank you for all of you all who encouraged her. I thank you for all of you who stuck by my side through all of my health trials and tribulations. And I thank all of you who are waking up today. And like the prodigal son, come to yourself and ready now to take your place and to do the will of the Lord. This is Pastor Sonny and Kirsten James, formerly of Keep It Real Worldwide Ministries, now beginning a new launch and a new phase into Kingdom Builder Ministries, where Keep It Real will still be a part of the ministry. But along with the rest of the ministries, Kingdom Builder will launch us all into what God has for us. Amen. Amen. Be faithful in your giving. Please, those of you who have not found a church home, please consider becoming a part. Your financial support is greatly appreciated. But don't get it twisted. If you're so arrogant and so bold. To want to think that the work of the Lord will go on without you. Let me confirm. It will. 
with or without you, the work of the Lord is going to go on. But oh my God, what he can do with you if you'll be faithful and join on the battlefield. If you don't believe me, let's put it to a test. Let's see who can rush to that cash app and look for launch the kingdom and be a blessing unto this ministry as a faith partner that we can move out in faith and set the captives free. We're about to have our benediction now. I pray God's blessing be upon all of you. If there's anyone that wants to just share, I want to give you an opportunity to just bless the Lord. Not long because we want to get to our benediction, but I don't want to cut Christ out. I don't want to shortchange God. Amen. Is there anyone that the Lord has spoken to you today and you are now ready to take your rightful place? The, the airways are open. You can now speak. Bless the Lord. And I just want to tell you that I know that it was not a mistake mm. when I met you this week. Mm. I've, been, I've been blessed ever since. Thank you, Lord. Ever since. And I just have to say, I give God the glory. Thank you, Lord. And I thank you for you being where you were supposed to be. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I thank the Lord and, mm. and I'm ready. Hallelujah. I am ready and I have, I have sent you a text. Thank you, Lord. Well, I want to... So I know, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I just know that we'll get a chance to talk. Amen. Well, actually, actually, the challenges begin right now. Because we're in a time that people are lost and people are looking for hope. And that hope yeah. is going to be found in the faithful people of God. So I'm going to have Amen. Sister Kirsten reach out to you and exchange phone numbers with you. I'm not going to give that number over the line on the airways out of respect Understood. to my wife. Understood. But I'm going to have her call you right away. And I want you to contact my sister Kirsten James three times a week in fellowship with her. It can be a five second call, 10 second call. I know life is busy, well, but I want you well, to reach certainly. out and just iron sharpen it iron. That God can prepare Amen. us for what he has ahead of us. Amen. 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 Bless the Lord. Is there another before we get to our benediction? Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Well, praise God for all of you listening. Oh, I believe Christopher Taylor. Bless the Lord. Chris, would you like to share? Hello, everybody. Okay. So I'm just going to read a few verses. All your works shall praise you, O Yahuwah, and your saints shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and talk of your power to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glory and majesty of his kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout generations. Yahuwah upholds all that fall and raises up all that it be bowed down, the eyes of all that wait upon you, and you give them their meat in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Yahuwah is righteous in all his ways, and holy in all his works. Yahuwah is nigh unto all them that call unto him, to all that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry. And will save them. Who guards all them that love him. But all the wicked will he destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of Yahuwah. And let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Amen. 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 So as he read Psalms 145. Bless the Lord. <laughs> people of faith if you don't see what God is doing in this new day I don't know who you are or where you come from my God <laughs> who would ever thought Christopher Taylor if you if he would if you would ask him when's the last time before now 
that he's going to church. He tell you, heavens, I couldn't tell you when was the last time I've been to church. <laughs> but now, and you don't see it, it was storming rain. Oh, my God. Someone just said seven years. It was storming rain. Not just a little rain. I'm talking beat down, slap you in your face, flooding rain. And he walked to get here just to be a part of it. But God had something else in store. You're not just going to come and show up. God's going to have you show up so he can show out. To God be the glory. God bless you all again. This is Pastor Sonny and Kirsten James, formerly Keep It Real Worldwide Ministries. Please partner with, with us as we launch Kingdom Builder Ministries. I'm so proud of all of you. But so is God. I leave you with this. And I want you to repeat this after me. Everyone watching, everyone listening, sitting or standing, I want you to say this. I am, I am, I am the absolute, the absolute best, best that God has to offer. Don't get it twisted. Short <laughs> God bless you. Now for our <laughs> bless the Lord. Now for our benediction, Sister Michelle Riddle. I knew it was coming. The benediction is coming from Jude, the twenty-fourth and twenty-fifth verse. Now unto Him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless for the perfect glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Let the church say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We, will be, we will be back same time, same channel next Sunday. We will probably begin this coming week uh, more Bible studies and teachings and leadership workshops. On May 31st, please consider joining us as we celebrate in our new church facility. I'm excited about it. And as Nick or Chris just said, woohoo! <laughs> God bless you all. This has been a joy and a pleasure to serve with you today. Have a wonderful day. And remember, you are the absolute best that God has to offer. Don't get it twisted, shortcake. God bless you. Peace. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.